What if I told you that you're making all the wrong trades in crypto simply because you don't understand one fundamental thing? Candlesticks. Your first time looking at a price chart could feel like you're looking at hieroglyphics. And I felt the same way when I first began trading. I felt like a deer in headlights every time I looked at a chart. But after over 10 years of trial and error, I've distilled everything that I've learned into this ultimate crash course for you guys. Reading candlestick charts is a powerful skill that can make all the difference between winning and losing trades. I spent the last 10 years as a full-time trader. And this year alone, I've already made over $150,000 in profits in just five months. And it all begins right here. Being able to simply look at a chart and spot the opportunities in the market. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to interpret those green and red candles, spot key reversal points, and use that knowledge to time your entries and exits like a pro. Trust me, once you understand how to read the story the market is telling through these candlesticks, you'll never look at charts the same way. So if you're ready to gain a serious edge, join me in this video as I share the lessons that I've learned through my trading journey. And at the end of this video, I'll share with you guys my favorite patterns to trade that have made me the most money and some of my favorite books that you guys can continue reading on candlesticks. Now that you understand the power of candlestick charts, let's break down exactly what they are and why they're so crucial for traders. So candlestick charts were first developed by Japanese rice traders back in the 1700s. These savvy merchants realized that tracking just the opening and closing prices wasn't enough. They needed a way to visualize the full range of price action and thus the candlestick chart was born. So you're probably thinking what exactly is a candlestick? So let's forget about these complex looking charts for a minute and just focus on the basics. These two things you see here are called candles. Each candle represents a specific time period. It could be a minute, an hour, a day, or even beyond. If set to a day, for example, then each candlestick will represent what happened in the market over that 24 hour period. What's called the body of the candle, which is basically this big block you see here, shows you the opening and closing prices in that time frame. When the candle is green, that means that the price closed higher than it opened during that time frame. A red candle just means the opposite. It tells you that the price dropped over that period. This is known as bearish, but there's more to the story. You see those thin lines poking out from the top and bottom of each candle? Those are called wicks or shadows. The upper wick shows you the highest price hit during that time frame, while the lower wick marks the lowest price. These wicks give you a sense of the overall price range and volatility. So why does this matter? Because candlesticks give you the visual representation of market sentiment. They help you gauge the constant tug of war between bulls and bears. If you see a candle with a long green body and short wicks, that's a sign that buyers were in control and drove the price up with conviction. But if you spot a red candle with long wicks on both sides, that tells you that there was a lot of back and forth action with neither side gaining the upper hand. Candlestick charts are like the window into the market's soul. They give you a snapshot of the emotions driving price action. Fear, greed, uncertainty, and conviction. By learning to read these human emotions, you can identify key turning points, spot trends, and anticipate future price movements. But here's the thing, reading candlestick charts is both an art and a science. Yes, there are specific patterns to look for, but the real skill comes in combining those patterns with other market indicators to paint a complete picture. It's like being a detective piecing together clues from different sources to solve the case. As we dive deeper into this candlestick masterclass, you'll learn how to think like a market detective. We'll cover the most important candlestick patterns, show you how to spot them in the wild, and teach you how to use that information to make smarter trading decisions. But we've got to walk before we can run, so let's go ahead and get the basics down pat. In the next section, we'll zoom in on the anatomy of a candlestick and break down exactly what each part is telling you. Once you can read those candlesticks like a pro, then you'll be able to tackle other strategies and patterns. All right, now that you've got a solid grasp on what candlesticks are and why they matter, let's zoom in and break down the key components of each candlestick. Once you understand how to read these building blocks, you'll be well on your way to spotting those profitable patterns. So first up, let's talk about the candlestick body. This is the thick part of the candle that shows you the range between the opening and closing prices for that time period. If the body is green, that means that the price closed higher than it opened. This is a bullish sign indicating that buyers were in control. On the flip side, a red body tells you that the price dropped, which is bearish. But the body alone doesn't give you the full picture. That's where the wicks come in. The upper wick, also known as the shadow, shows you the highest price reached during that candle's time frame. The lower wick shows you the lowest price. 
These wicks can give you a sense of the overall volatility and the tug of war between buyers and sellers. Now let's look at a couple examples to really drive this home. Imagine you see a candlestick with a long green body and very short wicks on either end. This tells you that buyers were in firm control. The price opened near the low and rallied steadily to close near the high. There was very little back and forth action. Now here is a candlestick with a tiny red body and long wicks on both ends. This indicates a lot of indecision and volatility. The price may have initially dropped, but buyers stepped in and pushed it back up. However, by the close, the sellers regained control and drove the price back down. The long wicks show the wide range of price action. We usually see these type of candles at big support and resistance levels. And this brings me to another key point. The relative size of the candlestick body to the wicks can also provide valuable information. In the previous example, a candle with a long body and short wicks suggests strong conviction in the direction of the move. And you can clearly see after this big strong conviction move, price continued to go up. However, a candle with a small body and long wicks indicates a lack of conviction and a potential reversal. And you can see this play out in this example as the price eventually ended up reversing. As you start analyzing candlestick charts, make sure to pay attention to these nuances. Look for candles with bodies and wicks that stand out from the rest of the price action. These often signal important shifts in market sentiment and can help you spot key support and resistance levels. By being able to spot candles like this, you would have been able to spot this reversal before it even happened. So now you should be beginning to understand the concept and ideas of how to look at these charts and use them to find trades where you can actually make money. Remember, reading these charts is like being the market detective. You're piecing puzzles together from the clues that you gather. This next section is going to be all about the candlestick patterns that you need to know. By learning these patterns, they will help you predict where the price might go next. But before we move on, take a moment to really absorb what you've learned so far. The more you train your eye to spot these details, the easier it will be to recognize important patterns as they emerge. Trust me, mastering candlestick patterns is a skill that will pay off big time in your trading career. So don't rush through this foundational knowledge. Take your time, study real world examples, and let it sink in. All right, now that you've got the candlestick basics down, it's time to level up and learn the key patterns that will take your trading to the next level. I'm gonna show you five must know candlestick patterns that I rely on every single day to predict the next move. First up, we've got the engulfing pattern. This is when you see a candle that completely engulfs the previous candle, meaning it has a bigger body and covers the entire range of the last candle. If it's a bullish engulfing, the second candle is green and engulfs a smaller red candle. This signals a potential reversal to the upside. A bearish engulfing is the opposite. A big red candle swallowing a smaller green one hinting at a downturn. Here's an example of an engulfing candle. Notice how first we had a green candle and then we had a larger red candle. It completely engulfs the top and bottom of the previous candle. And as you can see, it led to a move to the downside. Now we can see the same thing here, but a bullish engulfing. You see they opened at the same exact spot and then this green candle completely engulfed the previous red candle, eventually reversing this drop and leading to a move back to the upside. You will see the same thing happen over and over again. Doesn't mean you should trade each one of them and price won't always reverse after each one, but it is a piece to the puzzle that you're trying to solve. Next, let's talk about the hammer and shooting star. These are again, two of my favorite patterns to look for as I scan the charts. A hammer has a small body at the top of the candle and a long lower wick showing that buyers stepped in to push the price up from the lows. It's a bullish sign, especially if it comes after a downtrend. The shooting star is just a bearish version of the same pattern. It's a small body at the bottom with a long upper wick. It indicates sellers taking control. Here are some examples of these patterns in the real world. Notice that they all come in different sizes and shapes. Again, they're not 100% accurate, so you have to put it together with other clues, but you will almost always find them at a reversal point. Now, similar to these are tweezer top and tweezer bottoms. This is when you get two candles with matching highs for a tweezer top or matching lows for a tweezer bottoms. It's like the market testing a level twice and failing to break through. Tweezer tops often lead to a bearish reversal, while tweezer bottoms can indicate a bullish turnaround. Again, these will not always look as perfect as the examples that I just showed you, but you will see these a lot at big reversal points. Now let's talk about the doji because it's kind of a tricky one. 
It's a candle where the opening and closing prices are virtually the same, creating a cross or plus sign. This shows a lot of indecision in the market. Depending on the context, a doji can signal a potential reversal or a continuation of the current trend. The key is to look at the candles before and after the doji for clues. And last but not least, we have the powerful and mighty Marabozu. This is a candle with little to no wicks at all, just a long body. A green Marabozu is a strong bullish sign showing buyers are in total control. A red one is the opposite, bears dominating. These candles often signal the start of a new trend or the continuation of a strong existing trend. Now remember, you can't trade based on these patterns alone. The real magic happens when you combine them with other market cues like supporting resistance levels, trend lines, and momentum indicators. That's when you can really start to hone in on those high probability setups. It's important to remember that no candlestick pattern is a surefire win. These formations simply tilt the odds in your favor. So instead of thinking in wins and losses, think in terms of probability and odds. And look, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is not an overnight thing. To really master candlestick trading, you have to put in the work. You gotta put in the screen time. Now I know you're probably eager to jump into your own charts and start making trades based on some of these candlestick patterns that you've seen here. But before you do, there are a few common traps that you need to avoid. In this next section, we'll cover some of the biggest mistakes that beginners make when reading candlestick charts. All right, so let's dive into the mistakes that you absolutely must avoid when trading candlesticks. Steering clear of these common traps will not only save you a lot of headaches, but also a lot of money. First up, don't get caught in the single candle trap. I see this all the time with beginners. They spot one dramatic candlestick and think they've found the holy grail. But the truth is that no single candle can tell you the whole story. You've gotta make sure to zoom out and look at the entire picture. Because without context, it's just another candle. If you would've shorted this chart here just because of this one bearish engulfing candle, it would've been a big mistake due to the overall trend. Is this hammer a true reversal signal or just a temporary blip? Always zoom out of your charts and do what I like to call the top-down analysis, where you start with a higher time frame and slowly work your way down to lower time frames. You wanna make sure that you always keep the bigger picture in mind. Next up, don't fall for the illusion of perfect patterns. In the real world, these textbook candlestick formation you study rarely show up in their ideal form. The market is messy and that's okay. A doji, for example, might have a slightly different opening and closing prices. A shooting star might have a lower wick. So learn to recognize the essence of the patterns, not just their picture-perfect forms. Another big mistake when reading candlestick charts is ignoring the volume. Candlesticks tell you a lot about price action, but volume, which is down here on the bottom of the charts, is like the soundtrack to the movie. It lets you know how much force is behind the moves. A big green candle with heavy volume, that's a strong bullish signal. A bearish pattern on low volume might be a fake out. Always check the volume bars to confirm your candlestick readings. Next is a sneaky one that I see a lot of beginners fall into. Don't get trapped by time frames. A pattern that looks super bullish on the five minute chart might be nothing but noise on the daily time frame. A doji on the monthly time frame might be way more significant than one on a one hour time frame. Make sure that you're analyzing candlesticks in the context of your trading time frame. And when in doubt, check multiple time frames to get a clearer picture. The final mistake that I see beginners make all the time, and this is a big one. Candlesticks are not crystal balls. Don't get me wrong, they're incredibly useful, but they're not magic. No candlestick pattern can predict the future with 100% certainty. There will be false signals, unexpected news events, and just random market noise. Your job is to use candlesticks to put the odds in your favor and give you an edge, not to find a foolproof formula or holy grail. So how do you actually avoid these mistakes? Practice and persistence. Analyze tons of charts, watch how they play out in real time. And a big, big tip that a lot of people don't do is to keep a trading journal and review your candlestick-based decisions. Don't beat yourself up over every missed signal or false read. That's all part of the learning process. With enough screen time and practice, you'll be reading charts in no time, just like any other old book once you open it up. 
you can see exactly what's going on in the markets. Now you're probably wondering, okay, so I understand the basics foundational information of candlesticks. I now understand some common mistakes to avoid. I have an idea of patterns to look for, but how do I put this all together in a trading plan? So in this next section, we're gonna look at some real world trading strategies that put candlestick analysis to work. So let's break down a few setups that have worked for me over the years. So first up, let's look at a bullish engulfing breakout play. So here's how it works. You wait for a strong bullish engulfing candle to close above a key resistance level. This could be a previous high, a trend line, or a big round number. You can see in this example, the key resistance level was $38,000. Bitcoin continued getting rejected by it for almost an entire month. We finally got this big bullish engulfing candle here that closed above this key resistance. The engulfing candle is your signal that bulls are taking control and pushing prices into a new range. So where exactly do you enter? Ideally, you wanna enter on the very next candle after the breakout. So you'd be entering somewhere around here, exactly where this candle closed, with a stop loss just below the engulfing candle. This gives you a clear defined risk level. As for your profit target, look for the next major resistance zone or aim for a reward to risk ratio of at least two to one. So what I like to do in these scenarios is look back on history for the last time that price was in the same range. So I would probably go over to the weekly time frame, and then I'm just gonna look for previous support and resistance levels here. So we see one right around here. We see another one right here. So right away, that gives us two potential targets here that we can look for. Now we can go back to the lower time frame and see if that gives us at least a two to one risk to reward. And you can see this actually gives us a risk to reward ratio of 3.32. That means that we're risking one to win three. So on trades like these, if our win rate is anywhere above 33%, we are profitable traders. So I would have set this as our first take profit and this would have been our second take profit which rewards us seven to one. Now let's see how this trade would have played out. Now you can see here, we would have hit our first profit target. We would have probably taken about half our position off the table and moved our stop losses to break even. So at this point, we're playing with free money. We have our next target set up. Now we just wait. Now you see price here is consolidating and then we get a pullback here, but notice that our stop is still safe even though we're at break even now. If we continue forward here, we see that we continue to consolidate there at this support level. And at this point, we could even move our stop loss up again, just below this, the most recent lows here. So I'd move it somewhere around here and then just continue to let the trade play out. And boom, eventually we hit our final target there. Now let's look at another powerful trading setup that I like to do. This is called the trend continuation play. Let's say that we missed this trade, right? Price already took off, so we're too late. We can't buy now, right? However, by looking back, we can see that we're clearly now in an uptrend. What we do here is wait for a pullback. So there's a few things going on here. One, we're consolidating at a big support level. Two, there's not a lot of green candles with really big wicks to the upside. These are all relatively small and the wicks to the downside are one more often and are a lot longer. So that tells us that the buyers are in control right now and any dips that are currently happening are being bought very, very quickly. So my entry trigger doing an uptrend on a pullback is a 21 EMA. You can find this moving average simply by going here to indicators, searching EMA, choosing moving average exponential, double click it to open up the settings and changing the length to 21, then hit okay. You can see that during an uptrend, this is a big support. So here we'd be looking to enter on a pullback to this moving average. The way I usually set this one up, let's say if we saw this pullback, we finally hit here on this moving average. Let's say we entered the next candle somewhere here. We wanna set our stop losses below the swing low. So the swing low is gonna be the bottom of this candle right here. This of course would have gave us the best risk to reward here. But let's say we didn't enter there that close to the swing low. Let's say we entered over here when we once again hit the 21 EMA. We would have entered here and simply placed our stop loss again below the swing low right here. We would set our first target to be somewhere up here where the resistance is. So in this case, we could have put it somewhere around $44,000. This gives us a two and a half to one risk to reward. So that's a perfect trade setup there. You would have seen that we would have hit our profit target here. Then we would have actually came back and hit the 21 day EMA once again. 
we would have set up the same exact trade. This time we could have done maybe below this one instead of going all the way down here. And then notice that the same target wouldn't give us that two to one that we're usually looking for because we now have a bigger stop loss. So what we'd be doing in this scenario is looking for that next target. Remember that we drew way up here at around $47,000. This target now gives us the proper setup with a two to one risk to reward. So basically we could have entered anywhere here on these touches of the 21 day EMA, play the trade forward and boom, we would have hit our profit target here. So that's two of my favorite setups for breakout entries and continuation plays. Let's take a look at how to play a potential reversal. So my favorite patterns to look for reversals are Hammers, inverted hammers, hanging mans, shooting stars, and tweezer bottom and tweezer tops. The key is to pair it with support and resistance zones. So for example, here we broke above this major key resistance level here. And then we got two different tweezer top patterns plus a hanging man. Once again here, a tweezer top at resistance and a shooting star. Over here at support, we have a tweezer bottom. At resistance, once again, a tweezer top. At the support here, a tweezer bottom and a hammer. Tweezer top at resistance, tweezer bottom at support. So how do we trade this? We enter on the next candle in the direction of where the reversal is supposed to go. So for example, on this tweezer top, we wouldn't have entered here because this candle went in the opposite direction. But then we got another tweezer top set up here. And the very next candle was in the direction of the pattern, the tweezer top pattern, right? So we would have entered on the close of this candle, taking a short position. We would have set up our stop beyond the high here of this candle. You could even do the swing high if you want more space. And then our target would have been the next major support area, which would have been this one right here. Then we got to check if it gives us a two to one. You can see that this doesn't give us a two to one. So I'd probably be looking for the next support level here. This one here gets us a little bit closer. We're at 1.87. This next support definitely does get us that two to one. It's actually 2.5 to one. So I would have probably been aiming somewhere here where it gave me the two to one here. And what I would have just done is as the price fell lower, I would have got my stop loss, probably brought it to break even, and then maybe slowly kept continued to move my stop loss here like this as the trade moved in my favor. Now, these are just templates that I'm showing you guys as examples of places where you can start, but you can customize these to match your specific risk tolerance and time frame. Experiment with different entry triggers, stop losses, and profit targets until you find one that really resonates with you. And don't forget the power of confluence. So more factors that you have lining up in your favor, candlestick patterns, support resistance levels, moving averages, Fibonacci levels, the higher the probability of a successful trade. Of course, no strategy is perfect. You will have losing trades. You have to accept that. The key is to manage your risk with position sizing, with your profit targets, with your risk to reward ratios, so you can minimize your losers and maximize your winners. As you gain experience with these setups, you'll start to develop a feel for which ones work best in different market conditions. When in the bull market, maybe you're leaning more towards the breakout entries and the continuation plays. If there's a lot of choppiness and consolidation, maybe look for some tweezer bottom reversals. The key is to stay flexible and adapt your approach as the market evolves. Now, as powerful as candlesticks are, there is another level to this game. What if I told you that Bitcoin and the entire crypto market follows a four year pattern? And if you learn how to follow these patterns and trade within these patterns, this could give you even a bigger edge. In this video here, I dive deep into Bitcoin's halving cycle patterns and how it impacts price action. By understanding these big picture patterns, you can use candlesticks to time your entries and exits with laser precision. Trust me, if you wanna maximize your profits in the long term, you don't wanna miss this video. It's the perfect complement to everything that we've covered today. So don't just sit there, click on the video on the screen right now, and let's take your trading to a whole nother level.